the short demonstration of how you can use the Trello links to help with practicing certain key concepts at home. So you'll get a link from me and if you paste that link into your browser like this, it's going to take you to a web page and you might get a pop-up like that or you might get a board that looks like this. So this is the rhythm board and you can see it says fundamentals, rhythm, keys music, guitar, progress. Um, you'll see a number of, in this case, three different tabs and it, there's one that says start here. Wherever you see these little lines where my mouse is hovering, if you click on that, it will unpack. So this is just a little explanation of why it's worth working on rhythm and how you can develop great rhythm, even if it's not something you're confident with right now. That's fine. And then in terms of how to work on the rhythm words, that's the next little card here. If I click on that, it unpacks into this explanation here. Best way to work on these is to make sure you can clap them each, you can sort of clap and hear each one by itself first. And then if you work on each one, one by one, and then you combine them all with one of the other ones. So for example, just clapping, let's take six, rhythm word six can sometimes be a little bit tricky to begin with. If you clap that one by itself slowly, so you really know that it's clap, clap, space, clap, and you gradually start using a, a quicker rhythm word, and then you put that onto guitar, and it's going to be down, up, miss, up on guitar. Um, and then you start combining it with the other ones. So if I combine rhythm word six with rhythm word two, it's going to be one and two and three and four and. And cycle all the way through all of them. And, and that, that, that's just what's explained here. So I'm not going to go through it now. This is so you can understand how to get to the information rather than what the information is. And for that particular assignment, you want to be able to do it in time. And here I've got a bunch of different drum tracks for you to use. Um, you'll say it says you'll you'll see that it says three hidden. So if I just click on that, then I get the other ones that are down here. You want to start slowly. So if I click on eighth note drum groove, I'm going to get this little window that's going to give me the eighth note drum groove at 60 beats per minute. And then that's just going to keep you honest in this instance about whether you are doing it in time and whether you can remember it in time. And you can work up through the different speeds till you're doing. I don't know, a seven and a six, and then a seven and a two, and then a seven and a four, one after the other at 120. And by that point, you'll hear that you're gonna be creating some great rhythms and it's gonna sound really good. So your overall kind of minimum objective with this particular rhythm words uh, assignment and activity is to be able to play any of the rhythm words next to any of the other rhythm words at about 90 or 100. Then ideally, you also wanna be able to write them all down but hearing them and playing them is the first kind of priority for that. So then let's say you've done five or 10 minutes with that and you're finished with that and you wanna make that window go away, you're just gonna press click and it, and it goes, it disappears. Now underneath here, I've got this wheel of rhythm. That's another way of, of working on them to put like a chord wheel, put the notation for any one rhythm in the center. Let's say a quarter note and two eighth notes and then all the others around the outside. And then you're just gonna play, you're gonna play around that wheel you can start with a couple of repetitions or however many you need to get into the groove of each combination until eventually you're working down to just playing one pair, then the next pair, then the next pair at a good tempo. And then if you want to take that further, you can write a different chord next to each rhythm around the outside. So you've got a different rhythm and a different chord each time. And you'll see that that sounds really great and it'll make you very quick at reading different rhythms and getting to different chords in time. But if you're starting out on guitar, or you're in the first stages of guitar and chord changes, just working on the rhythms or the chords individually is much better. So that is how you use the Trello boards. And there's going to be different boards that um, work to develop different skills. Try not to be tempted to move right ahead and click on the different ones, because depending what level you're at, it won't be, if something's going to be a bit advanced, you don't want to discourage yourself by trying to get into something that's not necessarily totally applicable for where you're at right now. Um, but there, there are kind of different assignments as you get a little bit more advanced with using rhythm or chords or any of the other areas of playing that we're going to have these boards to help you with. So the other way this is useful is that it helps you know where you're at with different areas of your playing. Um, so if you know that you're 80% you're of the way there with this first rhythm tab here, 
then we know how to help you kind of get that last 20% done. If you know that you, you've basically you've understood it, but you can't do it at any kind of speed, then we know how to help you with that. So it also helps you track how it's getting on. If you know that it's, it's totally fine and you, you can hear and play and write them really easily, then we know how to kind of help you build on that. So that's the other reason why this is really great. If you were to choose to get your own Trello account, you can have your own board where you can essentially write down, oh yeah, I've done, you know, I've, I've completed rhythm card number one, you know, and I've completed chords card number one. And then that also helps you know if there are any little areas or any certain chords that need a bit more attention than others.